Welcome back to another episode of School of Airway. Dr. Torres in the lab. Who's representing today? And Norma, protect this house, protect this airway. So, um, there's a study that just came out that proved something that most of us probably acknowledge. And the Europeans are probably laughing at us, Americans, who think like we've discovered something new called the bougie, aka the gum elastic Eschman bougie. This is not, this is the Sun Medical, $6 a pop, uh, 10 pack, 60 buck combo. Uh, endotracheal introducer slash exchanger. Bam! Based on that name, you already figure out what to use it for. People are still in love with this thing called stylet. And, and people do not want to change their ways because this is what they were taught with. They don't want to improve things. The study just came out. Very smart people saw the study and 10% increase success rate, not bad for novice intubators. But the issue is the novice intubator has to have a backup. And that backup is the attendant. So how are you gonna use this device? I'll tell you straight up. The key to any bougie use is not letting your hand shake and move as if you had Parkinson's or resting tremor. The key is figuring out what is the way you wanna hold it. Okay? Try to keep the tip up. This is the way I like it. People say, hey, it doesn't work. Well, yeah, it works. It don't work with you because you probably have something called suckage or I'm not that good that day. So look, I'm gonna tell you, you cannot be flimsy with the holding. You have to hold it like a death grip, like your intubation matters, like your pride matters, right? So think about it. Look how tight I'm holding this. I will control the tip as it enters, right? So. The hard part is someone handing to you and oh my god I lost my my grip. You know? It's very standard. And of course, I just inherited this airway from someone else who had the patient in a coffin position. So I'm gonna be stuck in this position. Go in, visualize the bronchoscopy, realize I have a Mac blade, right? Visualizing, see the cords. I do my best. Because if someone hands it to me, keep my hand still. Not wibbly wobbly, still. I do my best to avoid the blade. The blade will deflect away. And go my tip in. Tip goes in. I don't care if I see the, a third of the glottic opening. I see an entrance. I look like glottic structures. Like a renoid. I aim for it. I go for broke. Flip on 22, 23. I have hold up. I keep the blade in. Keep the blade in. Reconnect the ET tube holder, pull back. If I wanted to be fancy, could have done looking feeling for tracheal rings. I'm in. Untitled capnology will confirm my confidence that I went through the course. Now the issue with the bougie is you show us to be either practicing on easy intubations and then difficult intubations. How are you gonna predict that? I am not in the in the in the realm of predicting correctly what is difficult and what is easy. I usually figure that out at the end, after I intubate the patient. It's a big fallacy people try to predict difficult intubation. I'm gonna tell you straight up, you can't. So get used to using this if you wanna increase your percentage of by 10%. Now some of my residents are self-proclaimed masters of the glide scope and they get all the tubes all the time, they always get it in. But they wanna use the Mac blade, they say, oh, I get the tube in all the way, in, all the time. And they wanna get good at the bougie. Do not give up on your first attempts and failures. Listen to me. Now, some of you guys are like, oh, I have no control of the bougie. I'll tell you straight up. You can hold this like a haka position, and even then, keep it still as best you can. Right? Hmm. I'm going to intubate the patient. Intubate the patient. Oh my God. Someone gave me another shitty airway. I see it. I see it. Right? You can either see part of the cords or just get the lattice. So I'm pressure, still get a shitty view, but no one's paying attention to me, so I'm gonna use this like the haka position. Look at this. Drive it in, drive in deep, hold up. Keep this blade in, keep this blade in. You need the assistance for this part in the ass, right? There's always passerbys watching. 
Look line 22, 23. Pull out, inflate, confirm. I saw it go. Now, if the tip only saw, if I only saw epiglottis, there's a chance if it's a redundant long epiglottis, the underbelly that's being hit by the tip of the spooji will hit and get flected down into the best called the esophagus. That's a danger. That's why you try your best to get the best view possible. I don't care if it's the most, the hardest, the strongest ELM, bioman manipulation as possible. If you see the crevice of the retinoids, aim above that and you will have the structures that are guiding you to the promised land, glider goal. You understand? So hold it, control it. Don't let the weight of the device control you, control it yourself. Regardless if it's like this or the preloaded ET tube. If it's preloaded tube, you better hold that ET tube tight with your death grip. Again, death grip, not to call it death of the patient. Pinch it, pinch the plastic, and you control the tube. Pinch the plastic, control the tube. Make sense? Do not give up on this device. You're only as good as, the, as your last airway. Understand? If this thing is to be a, to assist you into for success, for first fast success, get good at it. Practice on your mannequins. Practice your cadavers if you have them. Not you have live action practice on these patients. Hard because basically if you fail, patients can suffer hypertension, hypoxia, aspiration, bad things. So listen to me, practice. Practice. Yes. Yes, Alan Iverson. Practice.